Hello everybody, Scoop It Up here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys a demo program that I made for Bluestone. Now Bluestone, if you don't already know, is a redstone computer that I made in Minecraft. Uh, it's running in 100% vanilla Minecraft using only redstone, uh, redstone repeaters, pistons, and some glowstone. Uh, so the program that I have made for my demonstration uh, is called the Breezenham Line Algorithm. And what it does is I can input two XY coordinates and my computer will actually draw a line between those two points, a straight line between those two points. Um, also what I can do is I can select which display I want to draw to. So I can, dis I can output to this screen or I can output to this screen. Uh, in, the de in this particular video I'm going to be just finishing off my star here uh, and drawing this last leg of the star. And uh, in the end, uh, well, I'm going to first show you guys how to uh, run or how to operate the computer so you guys can do it for yourself. Uh, in the description of this video is a download link for the computer as you see here. Um, and that way you guys can too uh, input coordinates and draw lines and just have a good time. Um, so this here is the user input of the computer and over here is where I, the user interacts with the computer and that's done by uh, pressing buttons and flicking levers and so on. So you may not have noticed that some of the signs here have a white background. Now all of these signs are specific to the demo program. So you may want to go through all these signs. I'm going to be going through all of them in the video but you may want to read them again and just make sure that you know what all of the different uh, important buttons and everything do. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are these five signs here. Now over here I have a star uh, and if you guys want to draw a star too what I did is I made a sign or five signs with all the with the five different lines that you have to draw in order to generate this star. So you can see here 15, 31 is the first point, 5, 0 is the second point. And for those of you who don't know how binary works, I also included the binary values uh, for these numbers. And uh, so yeah, I'm on this last sign here. I've already drawn these four lines. And this is the last line that I have to do now. But before I actually start inputting these points, there's one more thing I have to talk to you guys about. Um, so as I said before, you can output to either this screen or this screen. This is a 16 by 16 display and this is a 32 by 32 display. Now, if you haven't seen my previous videos, this is a hardwired in uh, display uh, and it's a little bit faster uh, to run. Um, it outputs all of the numbers directly in, and it has a few other functions. It doesn't only draw pixels. But for this particular program, I wanted to be able to draw longer lines. So what I did is using a serial communication system I can actually send data through only one wire all the way to this screen and I can send XY coordinates to this screen and output them and draw any line that I want. So it's pretty cool. Um, but one thing that you need to realize is that um, when you're inputting XY coordinates on this screen, um, when you're using binary, because it's 32 by 32, you're actually using a 5-bit X number and a 5-bit Y number. So whenever you're going to output a line to this screen, you can use up to these five buttons, these five bits. However, when you want to output a line to this screen, uh, because it's only 16 by 16, you can only use the first four bits of this user input, because any more and the line will go off the screen. So what I did here is I put signs that say unused for these last three and one here that says only use when outputting to external display. So make sure that you remember that because it won't draw the line correctly if you don't uh, input your number properly. So let's get started with generating this line. So the first point that you have to input is, or that I'm going to input is 26, 0. So over here I can select whether I input my x value or I want to input my y value. So let's change this x value first to 26. So these are just T flip-flops. You can press the button to turn it on or off. And I'm going to input in binary the number 26. If 
you don't know binary, I, I put these binary numbers up here so you can you can do the same thing. And then my y value is zero, so I'm gonna flick it down, look at my y value, it's zero. So I'm good. Um, let's continue on. So once my first uh, point is inputted, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk over here and I'm going to go to the power controls of the computer and I'm going to turn the computer on. Now when the computer is running um, you have to remember that you can't actually leave this general area um, because when you leave the area chunks will start unloading and when chunks unload in the recent updates um, redstone repeaters actually freeze and that will cause the computer to break. So when you want to leave the area or if you want to uh, log out or anything like that you first have to put the computer to sleep. Now when the computer is asleep, give it a few seconds and all redstone movement will stop and it will actually pause on whatever line of code you were running at that point in time. And when you want to resume again, so now let's say I want to log out, when I want to resume again, I log back in and just turn the computer back on. Now if for some reason you don't want to just sleep, you want to actually turn the computer off, reset your line of code and have to start from scratch again, you can turn the computer off by clicking this button. I'm not going to do it right now, but just trust me, it, it works. It turns the computer off. Um, so yeah, just remember that. As soon, Redstone is kind of buggy. Um, I don't think it should do that. I think it should keep running in unloaded chunks, but whatever, um, it works. So now that my first number is inputted, I've turned the computer on, I'm going to walk over to these indicator lights that I have here. And this indicator, when it turns on, I know that the computer has acknowledged that I inputted a point, I've turned it on, and the computer has actually saved these points and it's ready for new ones, or these numbers and it's ready for new ones. So the light turns on and I have, it, uh, have a, ha a sign here that says input next point when this turns on. So I'm going to go back to my user input, I'm going to look at what my next line of code, or next uh, coordinate is, and it's 1631. So I'm going to go to my x value and I'm going to change it to 16. I'm going to go to my Y value and change it to 31. And then I'm going to tell the computer that I've inputted this coordinate. So I'm going to go over here to my logic input uh, section. And over here I have four different buttons. All of them are actually used in this program. The first button that I want to show you is this logic 2 button. What it does is when it's on, I'm going to tell the computer to output the line to this screen. And when it's off, I'm going to be outputting to this screen. So before you actually tell the computer that this is your next point, um, you should turn this on so that the computer doesn't get confused in the future when you, when you switch it kind of halfway through. So I'm going to, because I'm outputting to this screen, turn it on. Um, now that that uh, is on, I can acknowledge that this point is, is inputted by clicking this button. And I have it labeled here, accept point number two. So now that this is done, the computer is going to do a lot of calculations. And it's actually going to run from somewhere between five to ten minutes. Uh, and it all depends on how long your line is. If you're running a line like I am, which is 32 pixels long, uh, you can actually see my computer lagging quite a bit uh, because it's running. Um, yeah, wh when you're running, uh, drawing a line that's 32 pixels long, uh, it takes about five to ten minutes. When you're drawing a pixel or a line that's a lot shorter, it takes a lot shorter time. Um, if you're like me, uh, you probably won't have to increase the clock speed because I can still operate normally. But if your computer, like your real computer in real life, isn't good enough uh, to run the computer. Um, then you're going to have to increase the clock speed. And to do that, you uh, turn these uh, repeaters to a higher delay setting. Um, and that will slow the computer down a bit and cause a lot less lag to your real-life computer. And I, I have had to do that a few times because uh, it's just so demanding. The, the clock is running so fast and there's so many different things happening at the same time uh, that my real-life computer just lags to death. So what's happening right now is the computer is calculating XY coordinates and each time it makes a new XY coordinate it actually sends it along this one wire to the display. 
Now when the display receives new XY coordinates uh, using a kind of binary counter system, it will save the number to um, a giant memory bank. And the reason for that is as the computer runs, it saves all the numbers to the memory bank and it doesn't actually output to the screen quite yet. Uh, you can see uh, it should output one more number, will it? No, no, never mind. Um, you can see for yourself when you download it. Uh, this line will, will pulse every so often, uh, and that's how the data is actually sent here. But uh, that memory is saved, or those points are saved into the memory, and at the end, once all the points are generated and saved to memory, it'll actually output all those points really quickly and draw the line. So it'll take about one second per pixel to draw the line. Uh, which is pretty cool. The only problem is it takes a while to you know send all the numbers to the display and wait for the computer to process everything and then eventually draw the line. The difference between this and uh, this screen and this screen in that regard is that um, this display doesn't actually have memory like this one does. So every time you input a new coordinate or every time the computer generates a new coordinate it'll actually draw it on the screen. So the, the line appears uh, to, to be generated a lot slower, but the first point is generated really quickly and then it just takes a while for the next point to come and the next point and the next point. Whereas this one, it takes a very long time for all the points to generate and then all of them quickly appear. Uh, one final thing to note, um, so you guys aren't confused, and before I forget, is that when you uh, are outputting to this screen, the line will be generated from your starting point and finish at your ending point, uh, or your second point that you inputted. Whereas when you output to this screen, it'll start at the last point that you inputted and finish at the first point. And unfortunately, that's just one of the quirks of the program. I couldn't kind of work my way around that. And that's mainly because instead of outputting pixels, I'm saving the numbers to RAM and I just didn't want to overcomplicate things. So yeah, that's that. Uh, now there's a couple more signs. Uh, I'll be talking to, you, to uh, you about these a little bit later, uh, but for now I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back uh, just before the line is done generating. Okay guys, I'm back uh, and the computer is almost done running. Uh, it took about six, maybe seven minutes. Um, so yeah, uh, the way that I know that it's almost done is uh, if you're curious and, and you really want to know, um, right here is a binary counter using pistons. Uh, and I know that um, the line that I inputted has 32 different uh, different pixels on it. And so when this binary value in the counter reaches 32, um, it will start outputting. So it's currently on la on 30, uh, so it'll be about another minute to output. So I'm just going to talk to you guys a few, about a few more things. So when the computer um, is going to draw the line, actually after it finishes drawing the line, the computer will actually keep running. And the reason for this is I give the user an option to either um, end the program uh, without clearing the external display or you can exit the program and clear the external display and so you may have guessed that this this is only this only happens when you are outputting to the external display um, so if you want to save the line that you just drew uh, like I have here I've saved all these four lines oh here it comes um, so the line is being drawn you can see it's refreshing uh, every second or so. Uh, well, every 10 ticks, which is uh, every second. And yeah, it's generating away. So basically, it's just unloading all of the values that it saved in the RAM and outputting them to the display. And so the last one, and here we go. There's my star. It's pretty nice. I'd say that's a pretty good uh, a pretty good pentagon there in the middle. I actually used AutoCAD to uh, figure out what the coordinate should be to make a really nice star. And this is what I came up with. Looks pretty good. Uh, so just back to what I was saying, uh, the program is actually going into a loop right now. You can see it, it's 
jumping from line 60 to line 61 and back and forth. Um, and so what I do is over here I don't want to clear the screen so I'm going to end program without clearing external screen. Now I'm going to click this button and the computer uh, in a couple seconds will acknowledge that and shut off. It'll reset all the displays um, and yeah shut off and this display won't get cleared. <clears throat> now if you output to this screen um, there's a different set of uh, instructions if you want to clear it. What you can do is over here is a panel that I made uh, for either automatically uh, reset or clearing your display on shutdown. Um, so if this is on it'll automatically reset on shutdown or you can click this button and it will reset or clear this display whenever you click the button. Um, similarly, because this button is just so convenient, um, up on this display on the bottom left corner I have a button here and by clicking that it too will uh, reset the display. So I'm going to be provide, providing a download link uh, with the star actually already generated um, and if you want to test it out for yourself uh, feel free um, press that button to reset the display and you can uh, draw any line that you want. Um, I think that's everything. I don't want to forget anything, but I think that that's just about it. Oh yeah, uh, for those of you who are interested, um, also in the description is a download for a Word document that I made. And basically it contains a, um, a Python script. Uh, Python is just a programming language. Um, a script that I made just for debugging and testing. Um, and it basically runs the Briesenheim line algorithm. Um, also in that Word document is an assembly um, document of all the lines of code and what each line of code does, uh, as well as the machine code for the computer. Uh, so the computer is actually reading ones and zeros based on uh, the program, and so I just included that uh, for fun <laughs> in the description. If you're curious and if you want to check it out, uh, feel free. Uh, there's also a link um, if you want to check it out to the wiki for the Briesenham line algorithm uh, if you're interested. And yeah, um, please feel free to leave in the comments any suggestions of any programs that you guys would like to see in the future. Um, I think that I would like to make a circle generating algorithm next, but uh, if you guys give me a, an even cooler suggestion then I'll do that instead. Um, to answer um, to answer the question right now, because I know it's going to be asked, no, I am not able to program Minecraft in Minecraft. Um, yeah, just straight up. Uh, or any like FPS games, COD, Battlefield, anything like that, uh, it's probably not going to happen. Um, I do think that I could program Snake, uh, maybe even Space Invaders, uh, but anything more complicated than that, and it's just not possible. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, check the download description or check the downloads in the description, uh, and feel free to to uh, make your own lines. Uh, see you guys.